Good morning. My name is Jordan McCaw, and I'm the Director for Pupil Personnel Services here in Massapequa. Thank you for joining this live stream that addresses a reopening plan presentation for parents of students with disabilities. First, I would like to thank one of my amazing SEPTA parents uh, for providing me with this mask. It's one of the few masks that doesn't make my glasses fog. So thank you for that. I'm presenting on behalf of Mrs. Lucille Iconic, Superintendent of Schools, and the Massapequa School District. The agenda for this morning's presentation is uh, I wanted to offer thank you, uh, thank you to our families. Wanted to provide some updates on special education. Wanted to address our reopening guidance, parent feedback, delivery of IEP services, and in-district and out-of-district placements, communication regarding IEPs, full distance learning plan, 504 CPSC, CSE team meetings, evaluations, extended day, parent training, special transportation, SEL and PPS support, and virtual special class kindergarten meeting groups. This presentation will last approximately 40 minutes. As an update, this past summer, we opened extended school year. As you know, extended school year, or you may, you may be aware that extended school year was supposed to be through distance learning. However, last minute, New York State allowed the school district to open in person. And so our staff, led by Mrs. Hussey and led by colleagues here at Central Administration, and hosted by Tom McKillop at the East Lake School and um, Barbara Lowell at Massapequa High School, we opened an extended school year services for our students with disabilities. At the elementary, for the first time ever, we included sections of 1211 special class, 1212 special class, and we had several sections of 814. Our kids uh, were absolutely amazing. We were so excited the first day and the first week that they came back. They quickly acclimated to a school schedule and did an amazing job this summer. So thank you to the building, to the staff, and to our students and their families uh, for their support. Last year in my presentation to the community, last December, I had mentioned that this year there were a few initiatives. One is that we were opening a 612 special class model for students with highly intensive needs. We were increasing ICT, which is integrated co-teaching, where you have two teachers in the room, special education teacher and a regular education teacher, and those individuals teach together. The elementary, Prior to this year, it was 90 minutes a day. We've increased that by 30 minutes daily to 120 minutes a day. So we're excited for that expansion in grades one through five. Additionally, for the first time ever, we started a full day integrated co-teaching at the kindergarten level at the McKenna School. So we're looking forward to monitoring the success of those various initiatives. In addressing the reopening guidance from the State Education Department, the 144 page document. There were several pages devoted to special education. What was underscored and emphasized was that the district is obligated to provide students with a FAPE, a free and appropriate education, with the needs to protect everyone's health, safety, and welfare, staff and students. We also emphasize, the document also emphasized meaningful parent engagement, meaning the school district and the parents are encouraged to engage in meaningful communication regularly. There is also an emphasis on collaboration between the Committee on Preschool Special Education and the Committee on Special Education and providers representing the many settings where students are served. That includes uh, preschools, that includes out of district placements, and that includes students who are on a distance learning uh, modality here in the district. We've also talked about access to necessary instructional and technological supports for each individual student and consideration of in-person services for high need students and preschool students with disabilities. As Mrs. Iconis explained in her three presentations regarding the reopening, since July 1st, there has been intensive committee work, intensive reflection, a number of guidance uh, documents from the Department of Health and from the New York State Education Department and from the Centers for Disease Control. And we've attempted to synthesize all that to create a safe, 
carefully um, planned reopening. In recent days, we, uh, the superintendent has presented on a, a general reopening, a plan specific to elementary and a plan specific to secondary. This presentation is designed for special education parents. It does reiterate many of the points Mrs. Iconis made, but there's also additional information pertaining to students with disabilities. As you know, sorry about my mask here. As you know, the district plan uh, addresses uh, three different domains. One is in-person instruction, the other is distance learning, and the third is hybrid, which is a blend of both. We are prepared to switch from one scenario to another. In other words, if on a Thursday or Friday we are, God forbid, notified that there is an infection in one of our buildings, or there's an executive order closing the school, we are now prepared to immediately shift into a distance learning environment. And in doing so, providing special education services and supports to all of our students who are classified, who are in need of those services. As you know, Mr. Piotrowski, our wonderful Director of Technology, and our Board of Education have permitted us to purchase Chromebooks, grades K through 12, to support teaching and learning so that in the event we needed to transition, we could and we could do it quickly. Additionally, as noted in several other presentations, all teachers will have a power school learning, formerly known as haiku pages. That'll be special ed teachers, speech therapists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, psychologists, social workers, everyone will have a page. One of the concerns we heard last year was that teachers were communicating by phone, they were communicating by email, they were communicating through power learning. This year, we've, we're trying to emphasize that everything is in one spot. So K through 12, all providers will have a haiku, uh, power learning page that parents could access to effectuate communication. Mrs. Iconis presented the two areas of the plan, one being elementary, one being secondary. So I just wanted to reiterate some of those points. For elementary, all students are returning. Special area teachers will travel and push into classrooms. Lunch will be served in the classroom and students and teachers will socially distance to the greatest extent possible. Everyone will be required to wear a mask and there will be frequent mask breaks. We understand that this is challenging, particularly for students with disabilities, and we're here to support you in transitioning them back and complying with health protocols. We've also, we also will be setting up tents at every one of our buildings, and those tents will help us promote bringing students outside to give them an additional, additional opportunities for fresh air and removal of their masks as long as they can socially distance. All the classrooms will have desk barriers, and in elementary, the classes will be cohorted. They're typically cohorted where it's the same group of students together all day, so it's easier to implement at the elementary level. Intervention services, not for special ed students, but students who are not special ed who receive services, will be via a push-in model, meaning the providers will push into the classroom. Special ed services will be delivered in the locations noted on students' IEPs. So if the location of services are a therapy room or a resource room, those services will occur there. Staff and students will be required to complete daily health questionnaires, and there will be enhanced cleaning and disinfection. We understand that wearing a mask is challenging for this population. I'm sitting here doing a presentation, and I'm wearing a mask, and I have to continually hold it up. And I know that um, it's challenging. Um, but everyone is going to need to do the best they can to ensure everybody's safety. When it comes to uh, secondary, 100% of students will be back in grade 6 and grade 9. But all students in grades 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12 will be on a hybrid schedule. That hybrid schedule is to reduce density in the buildings. As noted in the guidance from New York State, uh, New York State indicated that uh, students with highly intensive needs should be prioritized in coming to school full-time and so our life skills students in the career communities connections program at burner middle school at ames and at massapequa high school those students will be back for daily in-person instruction there will of course be social distancing masks desk barriers similar to elementary at the secondary level and the health questionnaires 
All services, all special ed services will be delivered pursuant to students' IEPs. There'll be enhanced cleaning and disinfection, and MHS will continue to have an open campus, which I know our students are very excited about. These plans will be periodically revisited in order to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our students and following necessary health protocols. Our elementary plan, I'm not gonna repeat all of this to you, but I'm just gonna emphasize, individualized educational programs list services, programs, related services, and all of that is gonna be implemented. At the elementary level, we've received a number of emails regarding mainstreaming and um, will students be permitted to mainstream? And the answer is yes. If mainstreaming is noted on a student's IEP, that student will be permitted to mainstream it and we will do everything we can to facilitate that. There still remains flexibility regarding the provision of services as per the State Education Department. I'm not saying that to convey that we're not going to be implementing the IEP. I'm saying that because if we were to immediately revert to a distance learning scenario, the location on the IEP may change. And so we need that flexibility to shift from home to school, et cetera. There'll be masks, I said all this. Uh, okay, related services, location noted on the IEP. That includes occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech, counseling, behavior intervention services. Those will all be delivered in the same manner and location that they've previously been delivered. The only difference is that we're gonna promote social distancing to the greatest extent possible, desk barriers, and masks. We have a number of students in Massapequa who are enrolled in ODPs, out of district placements, where they receive their programs and services all around Long Island. Each school has submitted to the district a reopening plan, and we are working with those respective schools to coordinate transportation. Some schools are partial distance learning, some schools are hybrid, some schools are two days in, two days out, and we're doing everything we can to address the complex transportation needs that the reopening poses. Regarding secondary, as I said before, all career and community connections life skills students at Burner, Ames, and MHS will be in daily. IEPs will be implemented, um, and for students um, at the secondary level, students at the secondary level on a four-day cycle, for example, if I'm a secondary student, I may be out, I may be working, um, I may attend school in person on Monday and Tuesday, but work remotely on Wednesday and Thursday. On Wednesday and Thursday, even though I'm working remotely, I'm gonna be following my regular school day schedule so that if I have self-contained math period three during a regular school day, if I'm home accessing learning remotely, I will also have math period three. If I have speech period eight, I'll have speech period eight at home. Makes it nice and easy, nice and simple to replicate the master schedule just so that everyone could follow it. All teachers, speech pathologists, guidance counselors, um, psychologists, social workers, every provider who works with a student is required to have access to each student's IEP before the school day begins, before the school year begins. So they will be provided with access in the coming days and they will be reviewing IEPs to ensure that your students, your children, receive the services that uh, are required beginning on the first day of school. And again, um, all teachers will continue to have access to students' IEPs throughout the year, and that includes general education teachers as well. And the same thing for out-of-district placements. Students who are in out-of-district placements will have um, their own reopening plan. What I just realized is that I've been changing slides on the computer but not changing sides on the public presentation. So I apologize for that. This should make it more interesting. So the recording of this presentation, I'm sorry if you weren't able to follow along. The recording of this presentation will be available on our website. So in case you wanted to watch it again or you wanted to go through the slides, you're more than welcome to do that. Out of district placement. So preschool special education and the Committee on Special Education will work in collaboration with schools to ensure there's understanding of services. So everything that's written on the IEP for out of district placements, the out of district placements are aware of that. We're in regular communication with them. Any change to the IEP as per an amendment or as per a CSE meeting, they'll be made aware of. Transportation will be provided based on the unique needs of a particular school. 
data on student progress toward goals will be regularly taken irrespective of the learning environment. So wherever students are, if they're learning in the home, if they're learning on a hybrid schedule, if they're learning at school, data will be taken. Reports of progress to parents will be made by telephone and by email communication. When it comes to safety protocols in district, for mathematics, for example, in elementary, each student, rather than sharing manipulatives, each student will have his or her own set of manipulatives, which is really important. Supplies in the classroom may have been shared in the past. They're no longer going to be shared unless they're cleaned. Classroom therapy rooms will have disinfectant wipes. All classrooms, therapy rooms will have extra PPE, gloves, masks, and face shields if appropriate. Face shields will be particularly useful in OT and PT and speech. Most classrooms will have desks lined up in the same direction. Students at the elementary level will have access to hand sanitizer that they can use under the direction of the teacher. There will be thorough classroom cleaning, disinfection, and sanitization daily. And there will be instruction for students on proper hand and respiratory hygiene. All of that remains true at the secondary level as well. As you're aware, per correspondence with the district and per Mrs. Iconis' presentations, students, uh, parents have the right to opt their child into distance learning, a full distance learning model. And that model will be available for elementary students by trimester and by sec secondary students by quarter. Those commitment forms, which are available on the website, are due on August 24th. And I just want to emphasize that students who opt for distance learning Special ed, all students, but special ed students as well, who opt for distance learning, those students will receive instruction from a teacher assigned to our elementary distance learning center. However, when it comes to related services, OT, PT, BIS, et cetera, those services will most likely be provided by providers in the student's home building. All instruction that occurs remotely will have the appropriate support based on mandated uh, the, the mandated recommendations on students' IEPs. And the modality we will utilize, or the platform we will utilize, is Google Meet. For secondary students who opt for full distance learning, it'll be on a quarterly basis, and each student will receive access to the same teachers and classes on his or her schedule via a Google Meet. So elementary students will be assigned to the distance learning center. Secondary students will be assigned to their regular classroom teachers. However, at elementary, the related service providers um, will be from the student's home building. We're anticipating that after students, if a student after the first trimester or quarter is over, if they return to in-person instruction, those students will transition into the same classroom they would have entered in September if the student was present in person. So an elementary student who is supposed to be, who if, if under normal circumstances, if an elementary student, student was supposed to be in Mr. Piotrowski's class, he's sitting here with me, thank you Mr. Piotrowski, elementary student who's sitting in Mr. Piotrowski's class in September, if that student opts for distance learning, that student would be assigned to a distance learning teacher, but when that student returns after the first trimester, that student would go into Mr. Piotrowski's class. We understand, uh, and at secondary, the students would return to the same teachers who have been providing distance learning who are on the student schedule. We understand that this transition uh, back to school would be significant, and so our PPS staff is prepared to work with students as they transition from home to school, whether that be in September or after the first trimester at elementary or quarter at secondary. In the event that all schools are closed, and the district had to resort to a full-time distance learning model. I want to emphasize that what we did in the spring was not what we're going to be doing in the fall. Our teachers have been trained, our students have been given devices, and we are prepared to provide a robust distance learning model district-wide if we needed to. In order to advance that, all students have been given devices, all teachers will have Power School Learning Haiku pages, and students will engage in interactive, synchronous, live instruction every day. Classes will follow, classes will follow a daily, uh, daily schedule similar to the school day, which would support a transition back and forth um, if, if that occurred as per a governor's order. New instructional content will be taught, students will be accountable for work, and it would be essentially a regular school day in the home. 
Students would still have opportunities to interact with others through, through small group work with teachers and peers, and our students with disabilities would have all of the comprehensive services noted on the IEP with flexibility. Social emotional learning will be delivered through synchronous interaction with teachers and counselors. Guidance counselors would have the opportunity to connect with students and parents for say junior interviews through Google Meet. Psychologists could connect with students through Google Meet and or through the telephone um, and also connect with parents for consultation. If we need to do that, we are prepared to. When it comes to Section 504, of, uh, Section 504, when it comes to uh, Committee on Preschool Special Education, or when it comes to Committee on Special Education, all of those meetings this year, until further notice, will occur remotely through the Google Meet platform. In the spring, as you know, the district had to, um, actually this occurred right in the middle of our annual review season. And in so doing, we had to resort to utilizing Google Meet. Our staff adapted immediately, our parents adapted immediately. It was a meaningful platform where uh, information could be exchanged. There were some parameters set at the beginning of every meeting, so parents and staff knew who was speaking. Evaluations and other data were shared, documents were shared with families uh, prior to the meeting um, so that everyone was on the same page referring to the same documents. For special education students, the chairperson is the special education supervisor or the, special, the secondary special education uh, chairperson. For 504 students, the chairperson is the building principal, and so the building principal would be uh, chairing meetings and they would be doing that remotely as well. In the world of special education, there's always evaluations going on. Families or uh, school staff members who refer students for initial eligibility those, about those uh, referrals will still be underway. Those evaluations will be able to occur. We are emphasizing in-person evaluations. If we're unable to provide in-person evaluations, we are prepared to do those evaluations remotely. In the event of a full distance learning scenario, all the required regulations pursuant to part 200 will occur. When it comes to accommodations, there have been lots of questions about accommodations um, on IEPs, and I just want to emphasize that teachers will continue to use multi-sensory teaching methods. Accommodations will still be provided to students to the greatest to be possible. When it comes to separate location, this is why there's flexibility. When it comes to separate location, and a student is home, we're really unable to provide separate location, but we are able to provide extended time. Teachers and staff members will be as creative and as supportive as possible to ensure that these accommodations are provided in a meaningful way. Each student, each special education student has a case manager, and that assigned case manager will be reaching out to parents during the first week of school, both elementary and secondary. All students who have assistive technology on their IEP will continue to have access to that technology, and the district will continue to address technology requests and concerns. All right, Mr. Piotrowski? Sure. He just said that's correct. Documentation. When it comes to keeping track of IEP goals and progress monitoring, uh, we will continue to do that, and the CSC will have access to documentation and progress monitoring, and any goals or anything like that that need to be adjusted, we can do that via meeting or via amendment if the parent is in agreement. Teachers and providers will maintain accurate records of all data collected regarding student performance and progress monitoring. Some of our students um, receive, in uh, receive extended school day services, which is an extension of their day to assist them. Those services will continue without interruption, and those are the location of those services will be at the McKenna School and at the East Lake School. Parent training, which some of our parents receive, will continue without interruption if parents have that, if, if it's on a student's IEP. Individual parent training will continue to be provided in the home if that's the location noted on the IEP. And group parent training will be delivered remotely until further notice. A monthly schedule for the 10 sessions, September through June, that will occur uh, will be sent out within the next two weeks. When it comes to transportation, I know this has been in prior presentations, parents uh, could, in lieu of using bus transportation and want to opt 
for taking their students, driving their students to school. That's also by trimester or by quarter, as noted in the presentation. Drivers and bus monitors will follow all safety protocols. Parents will provide students with masks, and students should wear those masks on transportation. Students will arrive on the bus and immediately go to the back seats, um, and then will fill up the bus from the rear. Siblings will be seated next to each other, and high contact areas on the bus will be cleaned and disinfected daily. Some of our students receive special transportation as an IEP recommendation, and that transportation will continue to be provided without interruption. We understand that with students being out this length of time, they've lost out on the structure and the routine and the consistency of school, and we understand that um, that has been had, had a significant impact on all of our students, but particularly for our students with disabilities. Shortly after the conclusion of this presentation today, the district will be email blasting a very brief survey to parents to elicit information from you regarding what's going on with your child emotionally, behaviorally, and regarding his or her social well-being. As the parent, you've also functioned as the teacher, the psychologist, the occupational therapist, and you've basically been instilling school within the home. We understand that that has been extraordinarily challenging, and we understand that when students return, they're gonna need increased support. And so in working with our pupil personnel services team, including our guidance counselors, our social workers, our psychologists across the district, we have developed a three-tier system for identifying students who are in need of additional support. Tier one, we, we define as universal support provided by all staff, teachers, TAs, cafeteria workers, etc. When it comes to tier two, we're talking about individualized interventions for students who are struggling. Students could be struggling academically, they could be struggling, um, uh, they could be struggling with attendance, they can be struggling behaviorally. Those students may be in need of additional support, such as group counseling, such as working with a psychologist or social worker. Students with more intensive inter interventions would be identified as needing tier three support, and those interventions may include one-to-one -one counseling with the appropriate personnel and or referral to outside agencies. Every building has an instructional support team, and that instructional support team is led by the building principal. It typically meets once a week or once every other week, and staff members who are noticing that a student is struggling or a student needs additional support, or if a student is absent or it's difficult getting in touch with the parent, a student is added to the agenda. And the entire multidisciplinary team that includes teachers, related service providers, psychologists, building principals, administrators, the entire team will talk about what additional steps need to be taken in order to support students. And so, irrespective of how we're delivering the instruction, in-person, hybrid, or remote, for all students district-wide, any student who's struggling would be identified typically by this team, and those meetings will continue to occur, whether in person or remote, our staff understands how important these meetings are in acquiring the, identifying and acquiring the appropriate support for students. The district, uh, the Board of Education approved, based on the superintendent's recommendation, a partnership with Northwell Health South Oaks last year. And that partnership will provide mental health support services to our students, including professional development to staff geared toward the transition back to school. Essentially, Northwell Health will be providing the district with a psychiatrist one time per week for four hours. And the scheduling of that psychiatrist will occur, will be facilitated by my office. So for example, if a committee on special education recommended a psychiatric evaluation for a student, we would schedule the psychiatrist, of course with parent consent, to conduct that evaluation. If a parent was attempting to uh, you know, get an appointment for a, um, uh, for a student who needed a psychiatrist and the parent was unable to access a psychiatrist, Northwell would assist the family in doing that. If a family struggled with medical insurance, navigating that very complex process, Northwell Health would be able to support them. They're also willing and able and will provide professional development to our staff in the fall as it pertains to uh, psychiatric services and also as it pertains to the transition back to school. They are in a multitude of districts 
um, and they are familiar with best practices. I wanted to remind you, uh, this is specifically for kindergarten parents, that on Tuesday, September 8th, our 814 and our 1211 kindergarten will begin. Additionally, all students in every program, grades 1 through 12, will also begin. General education kindergarten, however, and, integrate, and kindergarten, the ICT kindergarten class, will start the day after on Wednesday, September 9th. So I just wanted to be clear about that. We were also in the process of scheduling several meet and greets for our 814 and our 1211 kindergarten classes, and more information will be forthcoming in the coming days regarding the date and the time of those meet and greets. Parent events. So in working in partnership with SEPTA, um, I wanted to put this out there. We have a link in here for membership and we encourage everyone watching this presentation to join. SEPTA is an incredible organization, they're extremely supportive, um, and they come to us with ideas. In fact, they came to me with the idea of doing a separate presentation today for uh, special education parents. I'm grateful that they did, and again, I'm also grateful for my mask. In recent years, the department has initiated um, several evening workshops. We did. Um, we had 10 planned last year, we did six of them because of the closure. Um, and in doing that, we've invited dozens and dozens of parents into the process who may not have participated before. And um, those workshops have actually been amazing in finding common ground in us educating parents and in parents educating us. It's been really, really effective and important conversation. And so those evening workshops will continue to occur this year um, but we're planning to conduct those workshops remotely through the Google Meet platform. Um, SEPTA meetings also will be uh, run remotely and a schedule in regarding SEPTA and a schedule regarding the parent workshops uh, will be released in the coming days. So I just wanted to um, just give a summary of the presentation. So all IEP services will be offered in all scenarios. They may look a little different on distance learning um, but essentially, um, we're going to be getting, uh, we're going to be following the IEP and we're going to be doing everything we can to ensure students receive the appropriate level of service as recommended. The distance learning plan especially will support IEP implementation. There will be some flexibility, but we are planning on providing all services on the IEP. There will be ongoing parent communication that's emphasized um, to, you know, with our administration, with our staff to make sure that parents know what's going on and that if there's pertinent information that parents could offer us, that we're aware of that information. To advance that, the Power School learning pages uh, that include teacher contact information and resources will also be very helpful, for, particularly for a secondary parent to view every course, or the students, to view every course in one spot, and also for our elementary parents um, who will be able to find important resources and information on there. The elementary level, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the secondary level, grade six and grade nine, all students will be in school in person daily. Secondary will be on a hybrid schedule, four day cycle, and our CCC students will be in person daily, every day for in person instruction. Our month, special education monthly meetings will continue to occur through Google Meet, and the same thing with SEPTA. Health and safety protocols will be emphasized with appropriate teacher and provider support. We understand that the wearing of masks is challenging, as you can see as I'm sitting here. We understand that the social distancing is not ideal, particularly for younger students who thrive on the ability to socialize. However, please know that we're doing this for everyone's health, safety, and welfare, and that we will work with you. The psychologist will work with you, the behaviorist will work with you, everybody will work with you to ensure that your child is as safe as possible and as, is as supportive as possible. We will present all of our safety protocols with enthusiasm to ensure that students understand that, um, you know, the reason that we're doing it, and to the extent that we can, um, we will present it um, as enthusiastically as we can. The SEL survey, social emotional learning survey, will go out shortly, and I encourage all parents to fill it out. It's a very brief survey, it should take you no longer than five minutes. All CPSC, CSC, and 504 meetings will occur remotely, 
in order to limit visitors in the building. We'll continue that until further notice. It'll likely be for the whole year. Out of district placements have provided us with reopening plans for the district and we're currently setting up transportation for all the different instructional models that the schools are utilizing. This presentation will be posted on the website for everyone to review. I encourage parents who may know other parents who are unable to attend because of work at this particular time to check out the website, to check out the website and access the presentation. Also, we have an incredible team of administrators within the special ed department. And I just wanted to list their email addresses here. Um, we have our CPSE CSE chairperson, Kristen Catalano. We have Rachel Barshak, Eastlake and Lockhart supervisor. We have Stephanie Del Giorno, our Birch Lane and Unqua supervisor. Marion Zadalis, our Fairfield and McKenna supervisor. Amanda Lenoci, our supervisor over at the Burner School, Burner Middle School. We have Danielle Halfand at Ames and Massapequa High School, and Michelle Provenzano, secondary CSE chair. These are all of our in-district administrators. They are very excited about the school year. They are working fever feverishly to ensure that everything is set up and that the students are set up for success. Finally, I wanted to mention, um, I, I addressed a lot of the questions that parents asked in this presentation, but there's one question that came in a little while ago. And that question was specific to speech therapy. In other words, in speech therapy, it's very challenging to facilitate instruction, to deliver instruction when the teacher is wearing a mask and the student's wearing a mask. And so within the context of a speech therapy session, if the student and the teacher can maintain six feet of social distance, and there's also a barrier in between the two of them, the masks can be removed so that the student could see the teacher's mouth and the teacher can see the student's mouth. We're also in the process of um, look, we're also looking into purchasing masks that some of our speech providers have recommended that are actually clear so that students can see teachers' mouths and vice versa. I wanted to thank everyone for joining for this presentation and I wanted to let you know that we're all in this together we know how stressful this is. We know how challenging this is. We know that everyone wants what's best for your child. And we know that this school year is gonna be a really interesting one. But what I can tell you is that everyone is doing the absolute best that they can to ensure that it's an amazing year. It's gonna be an interesting year, definitely. But we're hoping that it's an amazing year. And no matter what you choose for your child, in person, distance learning, or if your child is on a hybrid schedule, our staff are dedicated to doing the best they can to ensure continuity of learning and to support students socially and emotionally. So I wanted to thank you for joining us this morning. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to contact one of the supervisors who are listed in this presentation or to contact me directly. Thank you.